happy anniversary. <laughs> Glowing pecs, insane allergies, and exploding soda drinkers? What? Today, we are back at it reacting to a whole lot of medical craziness on the regular show. All right, let's dive right in. <laughs> I've got you this time, balloon. Oh! Oh no, bro. The things I worry about when I see this are a hematoma to the head, laceration to the head, and then Injuries to the neck. Other things that could happen, obviously, is spinal cord fractures, uh, spinal injuries. It's gonna be okay, Pops. What do you do when somebody has this type of injury? You don't really wanna move them too much unless they're in harm's way. And then stabilize them, stop any bleeding, call 911, and just be with that individual. I like the paramedics are carrying the person down, probably need more than two people. The stretchers that we use nowadays are a little bit more compatible. He should be fine in a few days, but he's definitely lucky to be alive. That bed could have killed him, killed him, killed him. A paramedic doesn't actually get that much follow up with what happens in the cases unless they come and ask us. I almost killed you, all because of my stupid prank. I swear from this day forward, I will never prank again, ever. Okay, that's enough. He's sitting on the stretcher, his neck is not in a seat collar. One, his head is huge, so sometimes we actually have to use like a, a towel as a neck roll instead if you can't fit, or there's hard collars that are sized no neck. There are multiple different options. Oh my gosh, why is he blindfolded? That's not gonna happen. Oh, but no. Oh, a lot of bees. Actually smart to potentially jump in water to get away. You can have an inflammatory response even if you're not allergic. So if you're allergic to it, oh my gosh, I hope you have an EpiPen on you in this circumstance. Do you guys have a bee allergy? Let me know in the comments. It's kind of funny that you took off your blindfold but weren't supposed to and then got blindfolded again anyways. By nature. <laughs> you get a lot of people that come into your department with like urticaria or hives, which are those like lumps that like itch, but when you get it on your face, the face even swells up. If somebody came in with that much swelling to the face, they're probably gonna get epinephrine, then they're gonna get steroids, an H1 and H2 blocker, which is a histamine, some IV fluids to fill your intravascular spaces, so that way you keep your blood pressure up. Does your face feel better? Can you see anything? No, no and no. I come over as a physician and I actually have to examine your eyes, so I will actually try to open them up. Um, even if I can just get like a little slit open, make sure that your eye looks fine and that you can see well. Dude, he's unstoppable! Not for long. If we give him more soda, he'll grow brighter and brighter till he exhausts all his energy. Then he'll burn out like a star. Soda has a certain amount of caffeine in it, not as much as a cup of coffee, but you know, if you're pounding all this stuff and you're getting your numbers up, not good, tachycardic, you're gonna feel anxious, and, and then this. So their idea is to try to almost overdose him. Dude, party Pete's party gonna blow! Pete. Hit the deck! Blew up. So I've seen people who have expanding hematomas underneath the tissue, expanding too fast and the tissue rips open. I've seen a lung pop, again, from trauma. There's also something called a triple A. So if that continues to swell under high pressure, those could pop and you could die. We're, We're Mordecai, Mordecai and the Rigby's. And we rock so hard, we don't need instruments. Hit it. Nice. A, one, a two, a one, two, three. Huh? Oh, we won. Actually, you guys collapsed of heat stroke before you even started. Oh my gosh. We don't even need instruments. One, two, three. <laughs> Not cool, no. Typically you're altered when your temperature gets 105, 106. We're putting ice packs in your armpits, in your groins. We're giving you cool IV fluid, wetting you and putting fans on you to try to cool you off. You know, it could potentially have long-term damage. So please get out of that situation. You actually got last place. Your subconscious must have created a reality where you were really good. You're in the hospital now. But dude, free AC. <laughs> I like it. I flipped it. Free air conditioning. I don't know if any of you have been to the hospital at the emergency department. It is kept 
pretty cold. The thing we do worry about when somebody is super sick, where we know that we have to fully expose individuals and they're gonna be naked, we're concerned that we're gonna uh, make them too cold. So actually they'll turn the temperature up in those certain situations. What did you guys do? We were trying to move it and it got stuck. Um, all right, on three, I want you guys to push. I'm gonna try and pull it through, all right? One, two, three. <laughs> Have you guys ever tried to move a baby grand or a grand piano? Those things are heavy. Literally, my mom was a great pianist. The weight of the baby grand that we had would put dents in the hardwood floor. Oh, it's stuck on this thing. Be careful lifting something crazy heavy. Use your legs. There's so many people that are just trying different force vectors and they're in a bad position and they blow out their back. I see it very commonly that somebody would come to the emergency department with back pain, potential herniated discs, or ligamentous ruptures. <laughs> Skips, are you all right? This is bad. <laughs> are oh pinkies supposed to bend that way? Well, at least it was your last chore for the day. First thing you think about, crush injuries. You can fracture and crush the bones. You can cause dislocations. And then obviously there's some lacerations or open fractures that we worry about. Then if it's dislocated, we'll do some nerve blocks, basically inject proximal and that way the whole thing is numb and we can pop things back into place. Dude, why does Muscle Man keep flexing his pecs like that? I don't know. It's gross, but oddly hypnotic. Happy anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> They're at the roller skating rink, which is awesome, but his shirt's off, it looks like, and he's flexing his chest back and forth. I mean, I mean, if you got good pectoralis muscles, why not flex them? But the fact that they're hypnotic is hilarious. Uh, Starla. <laughs> hey, babe, are you all right? Yeah, why wouldn't I be all right? Well, you look a little tired. <laughs> what? No, I don't. I look normal. You can flex them back, forth, back, forth, right? You can basically work out a muscle too much where you can cause rhabdomyolysis, well, muscle breakdown, or you can have too much fluid engorged into the area and it can cause a lot of pain. See? Hang on. Hey, where are you going? I gotta use it. What is happening? Who is that? Get out of here. Muscle man? Buzz? Is that you? Are you okay? Don't come in here, bro. <gasps> Dude, what happened? I was trying to keep flexing, so I started punching and slapping them and stuff, and now they're going crazy. They won't stop. Those just look abnormal. If somebody came to the emergency department and I took a look at that, I would definitely throw an ultrasound on there just to make sure that there was no fluid collection underneath because the fluid collection could be causing issues. If it's causing that much discomfort, you need to cut and squeeze out whatever is in there. So interesting. This is the second time I've seen this show. I like it. I'm able to bring out the medical components to it and what we would do on a normal basis and what we see at the hospital. Check out this playlist right here. And as always, please make sure you subscribe and turn those bell notifications on. Hit that like button for me. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.